How the f am I gonna build this? At some point, I think every woodworker wants to try and build folding furniture. And I've never really done any, so I am super stoked for this video. We've got two folding projects today that I'm gonna try. First one being this desk that went absolutely bananas on the internet with tens of millions of views. Chris and Joe love this thing and they've been begging me to build it for months. So we're gonna crush this thing out first. Then we're gonna dive in to the folding door that has been taking over the internet for years, specifically this little cabinet that has this awesome little folder. I think I can do a really cool rendition of it. Let's dive right into the first project. So as I look at it, this desk is a lot more complicated than it looks. In order to get that thing to kind of pull off the wall, you've gotta have a pole or something going across inside of it. There is a video out there that shows how it's built, so I think we can get this done. We've gotta do a glue up of the base Base first that's gonna be the actual desktop. I like the light wood color and uh, I have a bunch of maple left over from when we built this bench. So I think we're gonna dive in, mill up some wood and then I'll get the entire base kind of glued up and all the parts that are gonna go into it. There's a lot of moving parts here and I am deathly afraid that if I screw up one, the whole thing could go catastrophically wrong. So let's give it a try. So let me move this out of the way first and foremost because we haven't given it away yet. If you didn't know, you can win this table and take it home with you right now. All the information you need is linked down below. Pretty awesome giveaway we're running right now on the website. So I think to make this efficient, I wanna pick my parts, rough cut them, and then I'll just go through like standard joiner and planer situation. This little diagram that Chris came up with, we're looking at a 40 and a half inch by 21 and a half inch panel. I don't know how he thinks I'm gonna be able to do this stuff. Gotta love the computer drawings. So we're gonna cut enough parts, give me a glue up that's gonna be stable wide board. I think I can fix it after if it's broken. Do a little glue panel, glue up here, get these out of the way so I can get working on all the rails. I'm gonna do these in two parts just because of the width of them. I don't want them to bow. I'm actually gonna let these uh, set and then I'll come back later today and I'll glue them together. Hopefully it stays nice and flat. Always gonna be concerned when you're gluing up a panel <clears throat> that's wider than it is long or whatever, you know, usually you go the other way. But for the sake of what we're trying to do here and that look with the rails on the wall, this is the way we gotta do it. Let's go game plan these strips. All of these are a one inch thickness, which isn't a problem, but we're ranging from 39 to 24 and then there's a bunch of just random numbers in between. I think that'll be easier to cut after we're kind of assembled. So we just need one kind of square side. Material, yo, these are all one and a, gotta love that, one and five sixteenths wide. Oh well, all right, let's cut some strips. So while the panel's dry, we're gonna dive into project number two because I need to cut the base for the desk before I can start doing any of the joinery because a lot of the joints are predicated on the distance off of where it's gonna land on the base. So let's dive into that. So while I'm looking at the folding cabinet window box door thing, there's a bunch of different variations on how this can work. My buddy Johnny Lambert over at Johnny Builds has done some very viral versions of this that are like full scale. There's also a ton of videos out there. I really like how simple this one is, and I think it'd be really cool to put all of our snacks in. There's a ton of YouTubers out there making awesome and delicious snacks, and the guys say I don't provide them with enough snacks. So we're gonna build a snack depot using this cool door here. We've got a pretty cool design that we've come up with. Chris actually dove into like the nuances of how these doors work. So we've got all of that kind of prepared here. First thing I need to do is build a box for the cabinet and mill up all the parts that are gonna then go into the door. I think I'm gonna do glass or plexiglass on the door so we can see into it. Maybe backlight some LEDs, French cleat. I am a French. Get crazy with it, I don't know. I might even throw a dovetail in there for shits and giggles, who knows. But first I do need to mill down some materials and then get that box glued up. The question becomes shelf. Does Joe want a shelf? No. Joe just wants me to move the project forward. And that is what we're looking for, butthole tight fit. We'll get some clamps, glue on this, clamps, and then tomorrow I'll reinforce all these corners 
with splines that are gonna match the door, which we're also, we're gonna make out of walnut. Well, we, we put a shelf in because the, the door is essentially two parts and it'll go down the middle. And we have two essentially 15 inch boxes here. So this glue up should go pretty smooth. And by that, I mean probably terrible. All right, do it. For these like inside corners, because they're kind of a pain in the ass, we're just gonna throw a piece of tape across all of them. Help with that, clean up the squeeze out. We're trying to be quick here, so I don't want to have to do a ton of work on the inside of the box once we're ready to rock and roll, because I feel like I'm going to be spending a shitload of time trying to get the door to work. So you think you, I'd learn my lesson with these pieces of shit. I keep going back to them because they're fast, but God, do they suck. approximately 10 hours later. All right, so while the box is drying, we're gonna hop back to these panels. Now, initially, I wanted to have my full desk panel glued up. But after looking again at the drawing, Chris made based on the TikTok, it's gonna be a lot easier if I just cut this sucker in half and then take my panels together and make these cuts one time to get all these separate spacings then I can flip it and glue it back together instead of having to do it on both sides. So I'm gonna clean these, the glue off of these and then we're gonna get these cut down to size on the table saw. I'll kind of show you how I think I can maybe do this. So this is gonna be the panel of our desk and I think it'll be easier if I cut all these parts but there's all those measurements that need cut so instead of doing it in one piece, what I'm gonna do is just throw some double-sided tape on it which should allow me to fairly easily cut the exact same mirroring sides for all those notches that need to go into this sucker. What you uh, don't get to see on camera for this part is the probably like multiple hours that Chris had to put in in Fusion to get this thing to work. There was metric measurements on the video itself, but. I'm not a European, I'm an American. So Chris actually put it into a model and got the thing like kind of functioning and working. If I want to do this correctly, I'll start out by marking what it says here. So it'd be nice if it was one measurement. So this is three and seven, seven eighths. Two and three sixteenths, two and seven sixteenths, thirteen sixteenths, and two and seven sixteenths, and one and five eighths. And then I think every gap is gonna be an inch and a quarter, or eight, you know, one and five, five sixteenths. And this part sucks. This is the most precise measuring I think I've ever done on anything. How the hell am I gonna do that? Hmm. Because I'm a hack. The easiest way for me to do this is to just trace these lines all the way up, find this, the lines on both sides, set the fence, make a stop cut, onto the next one kind of thing, and cut the grid out on the bandsaw. Now I think I can cut the grid out. Something vitally important. When you're cutting like precise lines like this, you need crystal clear vision, which is why you gotta grab yourself some shop shades. These things, the clearest and most comfortable eyewear you're ever gonna wear in the shop. And don't take my word for it, Joe, the guy on the camera, he's wearing them all day long too. He put the camera down just to show you. All day comfort, I never take them off. I'm always wearing them. And he's nervous. Now let's make some precise cuts. Now this is where things could get squirrely. I've got a few options here. I could trace these around, which is what I'm gonna try to do. And then I'm gonna see if I can go back over to the bandsaw and flip the board over because I ran out of fence and throat. And uh, I'll try them that way. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to do these by hand, which I'm not looking forward to. I was like, how far do I go? Oh, there's a line there, jagass. These aren't that bad. I'm gonna just try this. wasn't too bad. The worry is that I'm not straight. <laughs> but that doesn't look bad. Okay, mark the next one. The dude who built this, built this shit in his apartment. So like, if I can't do this in a full wood shop, I'm a schmuck. I guess we already know I'm a schmuck, but. The dude did it in tongs in his apartment. Like an absolute G. I think I got offline on that one. I'll fix it in post. These are getting tight. Yeah, we're gonna chisel it. We're getting sharp here. End grain maple. It's exactly what you want to be chiseling. It's not nerve wracking or difficult at all. A tight angle too, really no pressure.
I'm pretty happy with how this thing's looking. I guess now we can uh, layer out, see what we're gonna look like here. Oh, so satisfying. Just don't snap. Damn. Bastard. Bitch was stuck. So there is our tabletop. Solid. Let's glue it up. So this will set up in a flower. I can start working on all the slots. There's a, a butt ton of them. So we're dry enough that I'm going to start messing with this. I do need to clean up this edge here because like I, when I was in my cut, I was a little slightly off. Made a few marks on this side. Yeah, and I should just be easily able to, to get that to square. So this is basically the nature of it. What's crazy though is I did exactly what Chris wrote. I remember I mentioned I was concerned about the kerf. That's, the, that's what this is. The kerf of that blade is kind of throwing me off. I think what it might be is I just might have to rip these frick sons of bitches down. It should be one and five sixteenths. Yep. No. Yep. Yep. So it's maybe it's just this guy. That's the problem though. It's the kerf. It goes back to the fucking kerf. Chris did this on the computer, but the measurements are kind of difficult. So I'm gonna try to do it by hand. But if our rod goes through right here, we need a slot that the rod will slide in on the next piece. And so that slot will be here to there. In order to make this work properly, all of these marks here, I need to drill a hole exactly where they are on the outside at the exact radius of, or diameter, excuse me, of our rod, which is 3 8 That'll have a start and stop hole. I then need to come back and relieve the entire mort, or is that a mortise? Slot, whatever we wanna call it, with a smaller bit, so then I can come over here and finish it with a 3 8 bit. A little bit nerve wracking. I wish I could just do the holes like the guy did, but I'm getting terrible results because my router and for multitude of issues. These two just get holes. But the, the rest of them, I've got to mark the center line on all of them, and then I'm gonna drill out all of the holes where everything's gonna land, and then we'll uh, cut some slots. Oh, sweet mother of God. The last one. These were such a pain in the ass. The bit got dull like three quarters of the way through, it started having ridiculous tear out, so I had to start taking less and less passes, which means like some of them I was doing like four or five passes on just to get the pocket to cut. They don't look great, but thank God they're gonna be hidden. That sucked. I don't know how this dude did it on the floor of his apartment and just made it look so damn flawless because that was like three straight hours of just milling. Hold. This glue up did not go to plan. One, I'm out of practice because I've built bullshit and not real woodworking anymore. I think because I had that center divider in there, usually everything will come together and those picture frame clamps just were not adding enough pressure. It took us a minute, but I got, I got her glued up. So let's see how I did. It took me like 40 minutes to glue this thing up when it should have taken me five. We're looking pretty solid. Yeah, we'll give it a quick sanding and then um, make sure it's square. We're really damn close to square. Looking at the drawing now, some wild Chris got this shit. What the f is this? We got three quarter inch stock. So that's gonna be the probably the first thing that I need to do is mill down a bunch of three quarter inch stock. Because the way this is gonna work is I will more or less band the door with triangles. So this will have a triangle and then this one will be a nipped triangle that'll have another smaller triangle here. And when I open it, it'll pivot from these two corners. So we'll have to figure that out. I think we just need to go get some walnut, mill it down to three quarters and rip ourselves some strips. And then I'll start roughing out parts and seeing how I'm gonna put this thing together. I think just by the way Chris designed it, I should be able to use pinned techniques. It'll make sense here in a minute. I gotta get over the fact that this is gonna look stupid. You can't fix stupid. I have to build the first triangle like this for both of these sides. In my head, I'm like, the best way to do this is gonna be a lap joint on all the corners. Here's part that sucks. How the f am I gonna build this? I'll do it on the table saw, I just won't use a dado stack. Then we're gonna be good and I'll clean them all up by hand. <sighs> first part I'm gonna work on is these two triangles. Create two mirrors where essentially I could take this, cut that part out, and then do the same thing on this guy. And it'll be one setup. I'll be able to do the four parts that need this. So the cross member will get tricky, but I can do the same thing. I can make the mark. I can use the gauge on the base on the table saw, angle it, cut my establishing shoulder, come back through mark. I don't have any opportunity to explain what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna do it. And so these joints need cleaning. The pivot point for this door will go through there, which will help lock it in. 
So next I need to figure out how the hell I'm gonna do the crossbar. Chris made it pretty clear that in order for these to work properly, they have to be exactly square. At least the way he designed it up. Obviously I'm just gonna do whatever I want. I'm gonna try to follow his guidelines. It is new hats, baby. Grab one. You could also get entered to win the giveaway that we're still running on the table I built in my last video. If you wanna take that home, check out our new hat or anything else on the website. So that, at the moment, is my plan. You probably ask yourself, why don't you put a domino in? Like, I could do a domino there, but I can't do a domino here. It'd be super short. To make sure that I'm super precise, I'm gonna clean up my joints first. All right, so I could destroy and ruin everything at this moment that I've worked so hard for the last 45 minutes to lay out. The only way to see if I'm gonna do that though is to grow a set and send it. So I, I will say I need to transfer a few marks because I didn't transfer my edges just to make sure when everything lines up. And they're 45 degree angles, Chris just pointed out. So they're not terrible. To add even more anxiety to this, I just realized because I forgot that I can't cut all of them from the same side. So what I'm gonna need to do is cut four of the cuts on this side and then four of the cuts on the other side, um, which means I'm gonna have to adjust the blade, which could lead to micro issues and yay. This is going great. I'm so happy. All right, not too shabby so far. Everything's kind of long and loose still, but boom. Clean those up a bit, and then I will have two triangles. It only took me two hours. Do you have to do more? <laughs> those are gonna be even more fun. Here we go, these are our two door parts. So I'll get these and I'll get these glued up, and then I'll bring them down to like final size, and I'll start, now I'm gonna start working on this other bullshit. I'm just gonna be these really freaking weird looking that. Somehow I gotta do that in the real world. It's gonna be great, it's his fault. In order to make the little gap in the triangle on the next one, I'm gonna start there. I have to cut the angle, which is 22 and a half. So I took that measurement, I set the angle here. I have to cut this with an outside width of four and 15 sixteenths inches, and then make two of them. It's fun. Is that right? That can't be f***ing right. Let's see, 11 and a half. I can't talk, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Now we gotta do these little, I'm gonna do a domino in here. I think I have super, super small ones. A little bit of TLC should be looking pretty good for the glue up sake, like not shabby, not too shabby at all. Those actually look really nice. Thanks, man. Thanks. I try hard. You can't have it. I don't want it, I was just like. Yeah, you do. Joe was just professing off camera how much he wants it. I never said that. Okay, so I'm gonna use CA glue to clamp this, which will just help me get the domino in. And then I will use a little dab of CA to hold everything kind of tight. That'll hold it while I get a, I'll get the strap around it once I have the lap joints glued up, because those get glued vertically, which is a little bit more uh, surface area and an easier thing to glue up. It's definitely a hack. Like, you definitely wanna come back and reinforce that. So everything should be dry and ready to get fitted. This has been quite a little adventure here. I feel like I've gotten nothing done because it's all so small and tedious. But we should start making some heavy headway now that I have triangles built. So I still need to build the last two pieces. I'll get these squared and shaped up and then I'll get into it. Touch these up with a sander and then like, there we go. And that little piece there, it's looking cool. Now let's finish the damn desk. Now we get to drill all the hinges in. So they need to be facing us, so that way this piece can go like this. Make sense? Yeah. Makes no sense to me. I'm very scared. 30 hinges, this sucks. This is not what I like to do. I just really hope these rinky-dink little Chinese screws work. Teamwork, like I said, how did a dude do this on the floor of his apartment? Zero help, we'll never know. I guess we'll never know. Can't wait to take it apart and sand it. As I mentioned, you gotta put like little strips between these. Racks. Where the f is that in the drawing? Yeah, I did. I read all 37 pages. Where's that in the drawing? It, it wasn't in the drawing. I was going to tell you. <laughs> it. It was just the one. I mean, I don't think the Asian guy did it. But he definitely didn't do it. Yeah, but the guy I watched was like, oh, I was having weird Because your drawing didn't have any curves in it either, so I had to adjust and then change everything. Yeah, you had everything fit and was no, there was no gaps in anything, so none of it. There were gaps between the slats. No. Yeah. Why don't we put our f***ing cards on the table here? Wow, guys, we have the whole team out here, and I have this much confidence this is gonna work. Oh no, this one's wrong. Who put the 
Guys, put a hinge on upside down. That's just a straight up miss. <laughs> and I know I did it. <laughs> I was gonna say I wasn't here. I hundred percent did it. No, I did the first uh, twenty of them. Sam caught up to me on the last seven. Let me get my shop shades so I'm protected and look good, and they're comfortable. Yeah, you looked like shit up until two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Go to your home. Are you too good for your home? This thing is. What some might call the Jankosaurus Rex. It's pretty baffling to me how much more difficult this is than, than I was anticipating. That one's too short for like the whole thing. How did that happen? They all needed to be this long. Damn it. Yeah. Whoa, it's sliding. It's sliding. Yes. It's sliding. Keep going. Hey. Keep going. That's it. Oh, we're almost there. There's a little bit more to go. What? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I'm scared. No, I think that's it. No, he's like. Chris is like, no, no, why, why, <laughs> no. So I think this is where the measurements got dramatically off. If we look here, we're touching in some a bunch of these. So my guy's drawing with the shit on the floor, all of these were up. See this line came up to go straight. So these slots were like super long for some reason. But I mean, hey. It works though. Yay! It kind of worked. Now we gotta see how the hell we can get that thing to mount to the, oh. I see what you're saying. It still has to come back. I mean, not really, because it hinges on these last two. Yeah, but it needs to, that needs to sit 90 with the top. Okay, well, well let's solve that issue after. We can cut that top flush, the tracks off. We already it up. It's like already severely moves the track. <laughs> Two of them were too short. Then we could make it a radius and get real fancy with her. Nah, Chris is like, I didn't build a single thing on this, but I don't want to do that. Everything happening in my life right now, I don't like. Mostly this. Grab that, give me that level. Just another feat of like, how the fuck did our dude do this on the floor of his apartment? <laughs> Left hand. Oh, it's terrible. It looks kind of like stupid. <laughs> Hanging, it's hanging great. So you do this. Oh, oh, that actually went kind of smooth. Now this is the. <laughs> Damn it! I put so much work into this thing for it to not work. That one, that one. So these three, it's bottoming out in, which is interesting to say the least. Seven, eight, nine, ten. No, no, nine, eight, and seven B. Wonder why. We're almost home. We're gonna tweak this slightly, and then we'll give you a little bit of a final reveal. All right, so we want this sucker opening left to right, and the parts to kind of all align, just to make sure before I get too far down the rabbit hole that screwed something up, I can't fix it. So we're gonna make sure everything's aligned for super goofy to like get all this stuff to be square. They're close to square, but it all kind of still takes some. Let these go. Yep, yep, they're completely wrong. We're probably gonna need a little bit of play just for the sake of like movement. Be careful what you wish for. Because a hinge goes in here, and here, and here, and here. You obviously can't have things be like super butthole tight, but that's looking, that's looking kind of neat, huh? Yeah, all right, next part. This and this. More or less, it's like two pieces of walnut that are three and a half by three and a half. We're gonna have a pin attached to the bottom of one and the top of the other is gonna float so that it can spin across. I don't know how I'm gonna make that yet, but let's make these squares. I got a little bit of, a, a little bit of the extra stock that I built, so we're just gonna rip us some squares. For those of you that are gonna complain, I have to cut two pieces because the kerf will not allow me to make one. So there you go. Just need some holes, and then I also gotta make like the handle. Both of these interiors, I have to notch them, and then I have to mount the rod to one side, and then have it be loose on the other. The other will then have a part that sits on top, so when I pull it, that it's attached to the bottom, and then spins in the top. When everything moves, it moves together. I don't know if that makes sense. No. <laughs> okay, hold on. It needs to be like this. So I need this notch. If I could become encapsulated here, more or less kind of do something like this, I could build it in, and then I'd have that rod would have something to go into that's not just this little corner edge piece here. So it'd be like a tab? Yeah. Because if I have that circle on there and need, these two pieces need to go like this, this is gonna hit. I'd have to find a way to overlap them, like cut one into the other. I just need to think of how, how can I do that? 
and then have the top one sit. I think I'm just gonna cut these two parts. Come on, follow me. My brain, I don't know where, I'm on a different planet right now. I'll just cut them together and then I can cut a lap joint like I've done on the other ones in the part that's gonna have the curl to it. So if that makes sense, I can I can cut, I think I can do that relief joint. That should allow me to get this to work. And like I said, I'm gonna have some play because of the way this is built or for needing to have a hinge in it. Ah, this is probably so hard to follow on camera, I'm sorry. Or am I? I'm literally just making shit up as I go. <laughs> So this should kind of show you what I'm thinking because obviously at the moment it makes no sense. If you look at it from here, I need these to line up perfect and be 90 degrees. And then I need to make half laps on the top and the bottom because when you pull it up, the top one stays fixed and the bottom one rotates, I think. So the theory in my head so far is that. So I'll clean these up a bit something that I think I just realized that I screwed up on. You know, as you pull this, these will pivot, and then when I get to this side, they're not gonna, like I, I don't have enough room for it to open the whole way. So I have to have straight edges. I can't have the edges the way I have them. Now, I wonder if that's an easy fix. Looking at it, I think I'm gonna have to recut these. These holes got off, centered. That's what we needed to do though. Now that we know, it'll be a little easier to do this time. Let's try again. They're still off, damn it. I'm pretty sure so the mechanism works. I pull it out. These hinges go down here. These hinges go up here. And so I'm going to use the same hinges we used on the folding desk. I might just attach them and see if it works and then come back and mortise them in. Commence time lapse of boring stuff. All right, so I'm super excited that we are finally getting shop shades from the manufacturer, which means they're gonna be hitting you guys soon. And I have to send a huge thank you out there to all of you who have supported the pre-launch, especially those of you who grabbed up the five and 10 pack bundles. One of the perks of that was, I was gonna shout you out on a video. So while I'm working on this project, I'm gonna send a huge thank you out to a ton of you guys. I apologize if I butcher them, but we're starting off. Thank you, Ragnar, uh, Sigurdsson, uh, and Hilmar Sigurdsson, looks like uh, family members buying some stuff together. We got Jesse Jensen, thank you. Uh, Casey Lambert, Kyle Gillenwater, Casper Lehmans, Emerson Gates, Lee Anchetta, Yehuda Poulter, Richard Irwin, Richard Ratmansky, Christopher Schuyler, sorry for butchering that, Brad McElhaney, Scott Storka, William Park, Igor Efremov, Jimmy Shul, Britton Kent, Michael Temple, Ricky Bellinger, spelled R-I-K-K-I, pretty cool there. Cody Williamson, Justin Barber, Ryan Feeney, Ryan O'Connor, Christopher R. Hines, Breed Danielson, Corey Duffel, David Gordon, Bruno H. LaCointry, Dustin Jones, Whit Evans, Corey Hulm, Neil Person, David Rodriguez, Major Shong, Peter Bulow, and Jeffrey Pollard. All of you bought a five pack and all of you are absolutely friggin' amazing. I cannot wait to see what you do with all of those shop shades. We had two of you, absolute animals, purchase 10 packs. This is the type of stuff that I honestly cannot say thank you to enough. It allows us to make these videos. It allows me to spend stupid amounts of money on increasing our production value, our team, and making the projects go to a whole nother level because a lot of those do get expensive. So thank you guys so much. Our two 10 pack purchases are gonna be Matt Lang. You are awesome. Thank you, Matt. And in this last name, I am so sorry if I butchered this. I think it's Maced Petrakowski. If I mispronounce that, I am so sorry. But I've gotta say it once again, I couldn't do what I do without all of you. Thank you so much for supporting Shop Shades. They are going to be shipping very, very soon. I am so, so excited for all of you to finally get your hands on them. I've been very much looking forward to this. This is the one of only two pairs that we have that I've just been holding on to. I am so excited to share them with the world. Now, this build is kicking my ass, so let's get back to it. All right, all the hinges are at least mocked into place, and for the most part, everything is going smoothly. I am running into some squaring issues, but also the gaps that are in the hinges. This is something I thought I would have to deal with, but I kind of wanted to be able to adjust 
once I got the hinges in place. Now, everything as you can see is more or less working, but we've got some bigger gaps here, gaps here, small gap here. But for the most part, the hinging mechanism is working. I need to get it pinned into place. Now my concern here, people, and this is where, I probably should have watched some videos on, besides this TikTok on people making these, because I just saw the TikTok and was like, yep, I could do it, let's send it. When it's square like this, my box is actually a little bit too small one, so that sucks because now I can't take a perfect measurement on these corners and pin it. I'm gonna have to do a, the corner pin on the box and then index it to these parts and I'm concerned. So I wanna get the gaps down to where they're gonna be final. That way, any of the issues that might come up because of the, you know, that little bit of a difference in the location of my corner pins, I wanna be able to adjust it easily, not with like taking this whole thing apart again. This whole part here, this has got me stoked. So we're really, really close here. I'm gonna mortise these in the fastest way I can probably, th I can think of, and then we'll get to finally install this thing and get this cabinet wrapped up. So the gaps are a little bit better, and I think I'm just gonna have to do some handheld TLC, but I am confident in this next part. So I need to drill a hole for our rod to go into. We're gonna be using a metal rod. I'm going to mark where I want my hole to be in regards to my corners here. Drill that in. I'll then take this little indexer that I can put in and I'll be able to match up my door and then from the back, it'll put a hole in it. So I can have those perfectly aligned to where I want them because measurements are off slightly because of how the gaps and how loose the hinges are. I don't know how to, how to work around that. Just being honest, it's, it's kind of aggravating. And I just get to send it. Sweet. I'm really, really hoping that even though it's like slightly off, it doesn't make a huge difference in opening. Because if that's the case, I'm kind of screwed, my guy. Moment of truth. Damn it. What's wrong? Why aren't you moving? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I think I need to chamfer the insides of these. They want to pull apart. Yeah. Uh, it's still touching back here. So, like, you wanted to. Do the same thing on both sides. I think I might have to do this side too, Amphor, because that's pulling it back. Oh, boy, is that jank. That is janky as hell. But it kind of worked. <laughs> so, I'm close. <laughs> No, oh, it broke. I was trying to put a clamp on it to be responsible. Can't, can't take your eyes off of it around here. Damn it. Okay, let me think. All right, so we're, I'm dealing with a few things here. One, I, I broke this, so I threw some CA glue on it. I need to fix it, but it has me wondering if there's a better way. But two, I have to take the plane, um, this horizontal plane, this, this plane, in order to get this stuff to actually function. So to do that, I think I'm gonna, ch I was gonna, put a nut on these, I was gonna thread it, and then nut it on, and then have that just kind of like look decent, but I think there's a better option if I just run to the hardware store, I can get like a hex, hex screw for, for a threaded part here, because when that holds closer to it, it'll eliminate the play that's coming into it in um, the other planes. I went back and I watched the video of our guy, and check this out, he has a part inside of his door handle, you can see the slots on the end there. He has two pivot points in the top and the bottom, but his pivot's on top and bottom with a handle and it has a latch. So I'm just gonna do that. It should go pretty quick. I'm pretty pumped because I'm pretty stupid, but sometimes I have good ideas. So we got all these brass hinges on here already. So walnut and brass do look good together. So I was at the store, I was like, hmm. our dude in the video, he used black hardware. And I was like, all right, well, how can I do something similar? So I started looking around and they had some pretty nice looking brass plated hardware. I can fix these holes and re-drill them um, and you won't see it because these nice fat heads and then I can put a threaded insert in here and the holes are already drilled here that will allow me to use this nice looking faster on the front than we're matching here. This one's a little bit more polished and then I can rebuild this over here to use that plate mechanism that the dude had in his. I'm gonna recut these parts here though because these are super easy to put. Once I have them square, they'll be good. I'll cut the internal aspect that will make those fit nicely. I'm gonna get these on here first so I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, that should be an easy fix. I'm stoked, this is looking good. You make like a coffee on your way to the door? No, I'm fucking inspired. So the hardware is now, it's gonna hold the face down. So as I pull it, it moves a lot smoother. Still need to fix this issue, but the issue that was there 
with that stuff popping off. See how that's staying way tighter? Holy shit. Yeah, so like I, I wanted to address that before we did anything else. Crazy. That, now I gotta fix out. They're just coming in like it's crazy angles. I did have to chamfer the living shit out of this, so I'll probably have to do that over here. This one has a little bit of play. But I now know that the mechanism is gonna be good to go. Now I can fix the handle. And once I take the play out of that, I'll be pretty pumped. This part is here is, is solved though, which, which Joe and I were concerned about because it, it looked like trash. I'm so glad I went back and watched that dude's video. Sometimes you just need to take a dump and watch someone's video. Because I know most of you are watching this video on the toilet right now. Don't you lie to me. You commented on it on the last time I made that. I make good pooping content. All right, to solve this next issue, I've got another piece of wood here. And I'm going to cut these two blocks again. You're joking. Not another one? And then I'm going to cut a spline inside of it where I'm going to add a piece of metal where I'll be able to have a pivot point on the top and the bottom, just like our dude did. So when I pull this out, these stay in plane. They should stay in plane. The issue I'm having is that I suck. And then I built a sucky thing and there's a lot of slop. So when these are in these stay in plane the whole time, therefore that integral pivot should be good. I was feeling pretty shitty, feeling pretty good. Yeah, we're getting close. Well, so like I said, this needs to stay in plane. Should it be a bigger piece is the question. Essentially what we need is for this to stay like that and go around. See how it still turns? So what, it'll be pinned. In a perfect world, that's what I should do. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna take the center of that, my piece here, it'll sit perfectly here and here, and then as it turns, and then I know exactly what to cut there. I'm trying to make sure that I stay center on the piece and give myself a slight gap. Okay, so that's a free rotation there. I'm gonna have to open up this side because I might have to round those edges. I want this to go into here. Should be going through there. Now what we got to do is get these two to turn. <laughs> There's not enough gap in there for them to turn at the same time. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to find out, Joe. Are we ready? All right. Well, now we're getting somewhere. We need some TLC on this fit, but that's better than where we were. So I've been fussing with this all morning and we're pretty damn close. The new handle kind of is a little bit finicky. So I put this barrier or this part here that I have uh, some magnets in. You can see I put magnets here and here. They're not like the strongest magnets. They're just Home Depot neodymiums, which you know, I'm glad that they sell Home Depot neodymium now, but they're not great. But for the most part, it's looking damn good. The new mechanism is working good. It comes the whole way out, door opens. I think all I need to do now is I'll take it apart. I'm gonna do some, some tidying up and then I want to actually drop in um, some, some plexi in here. I get a back panel cut and then this thing will be a wrap. Couple more cuts, get that glass in. She's almost done. Okay, let's cut some plexi. And for the most enjoyable part about working with acrylic, sand your edge. Want to use a fine grit and get all the scratches out? You peel your paper off, you now get to polish the edge with a flame. Make sure you torch the end of your bench. So satisfying. Sand it up looking legit. Now it's time for spray. In the words of our forefathers, let us spray. Both of these turned out pretty cool, I will say. Way more difficult than I thought. Took me way longer than I was anticipating. Let me know what you think about both of these projects. Thank you so much for one million subscribers. I freaking love each and every one of yins. And after you hit that subscribe button, let me know, what are we gonna build next?